In my firm's Manhattan and Philadelphia offices, we host a weekday prayer service, a mincha minion. So one day last week in our Manhattan office, I walked into our mincha minion in our conference room, and I saw that no one was standing in the front of the room ready to lead the service. So I looked at one fellow who often leads, and I said, I think you're up. He said, nah, I'm a little tired today. I said, okay. So I made eye contact with another fellow in the back of the room who often leads, and I said, I think you're up. And he started to make a face, like, I don't know. I said, all right, I know. You want an escort to the front of the room. So I started walking to the back of the room to get him when the first fellow said, Harry, what about you? Why don't we get to hear you lead the service? So I turned to him, and in one of the dumbest phrases to ever come out of my mouth, I said, you know, I think I donate enough time to the Jewish people. And his head jerked back, and I immediately realized how ridiculous that sounded. And I explained to him, no, what I meant was, I'm used to being up in the front of the room in the limelight, let someone else have a chance. But what I said was obviously ridiculous. Why? Because from the moment we're born, we've already been the recipient of one of God's miracles. And then when we're old enough to realize what it means to be a Jew, we understand that we're the recipient of a second miracle. Because statistically, it is ridiculous, it's preposterous that we're still around after so many attempts to destroy us. And so we've got a debt of gratitude that if we spent our entire life, every second of it trying to repay, we still couldn't. We can't ever do enough for the Jewish people. And maybe that's why the rabbis in their genius decreed that once a year, each of us has to make a public declaration of solidarity with the Jewish people. We have to light a menorah, and not just light it, but we have to put it in the front window of our homes or outside our homes to declare this is a Jewish home and to show solidarity with our Jewish brethren, passers-by walking and who see the light in our window and say, that's a Jewish home and I have a Jewish home. Maybe I should light Hanukkah candles too and to try to make up for that strife that was at the heart of the Hanukkah story. The Hanukkah story wasn't just a battle between Jew and Greek. It was a battle between Jew and Jew, between the Maccabees and their followers who wanted to hold on to Judaism and to the unique culture and religion that is Judaism versus the Jewish Hellenists who said, it's too quaint, it's antiquated, get over it. We can be good Greeks. The Greeks are lovers of sports and art and philosophy, and they're scholars too. Forget about those ridiculous rituals. And the Maccabees fought against their brethren and against the Greeks, and they won. And that's a fight that we have to keep fighting in every generation if we're going to make sure that there will be another generation of Jews. One of the rabbis with whom I studied when I was growing up likes to tell the story of how he received a massive dose of inspiration when he was a teenager. His father took him to hear the chief rabbi of Palestine speak. Palestine, because Israel had not yet been formed. And this was immediately after the Holocaust. And the rabbi explained to these young men that he had just had a visit with the Pope at the Vatican. And he asked the Pope if he would return the thousands of Jewish children who had been entrusted to Catholic institutions before or during World War II in order to save those children from certain death at the hands of the Nazis. And the Pope refused. He said, I'm sorry. Those children were baptized, and I cannot return them to homes where they will be raised in a different faith. And so this rabbi started to cry, and he said, there's nothing more that I can do for those Jewish children. But I ask each of you young men, what are you going to do to help rebuild the Jewish people? And maybe that's yet another reason why the Hanukkah story always occurs during the story in the Torah of Joseph, of Yosef who also kept asking himself that question, what can I do, or what more can I do for the Jewish people? He spent time transferring Egyptians from city to city, why? Because he knew that his brothers, the same brothers who wanted to kill him and who had sold him as a slave, were eventually going to make their way down to Egypt. And those brothers were the Jewish people. And he didn't want them to feel uncomfortable. He didn't want them to feel like strangers, so he moved everybody around, so everybody would be new to their neighborhood. So this Hanukkah, when we light our candles, let's each of us ask ourselves the following questions. Am I doing enough for Jewish solidarity? Am I doing enough for Jewish continuity? Am I doing enough for the Jewish people? Happy Hanukkah.